Hello! Today on Vintage Sky, history of an airplane that won the 1932 International Challenge Trophy, the Polish RWD-6. This plane was designed in order to enter the aforementioned competition. The competition was held in Berlin and the Germans, the organizers, published the regulations, the technical regulations, as late as 10 months before the competition itself. So it's pretty short time to develop a new airplane. But RWD, small factory, small private factory designers, were capable of creating simplified technical documentation and making three airplanes within just five months. RWD6 had tubular fuselage frame and side-by-side -side cockpit. This layout gave higher score in the competition than classical tandem. Seats were adjusted to fit parachutes and their placement could be changed even in flight. Dashboard had standard German-made Ascania Werke instruments. It had two compasses. In the middle of the dashboard you can see a label stating Pożar, this means fire, and above it there was a switch igniting a fire extinguisher. Cockpit was vented, there are vents in front windows, as well as in the sides of the fuselage. Side windows in the doors could be opened and they were held open by a simple wire mechanism. Inner side of doors were trimmed and had pockets for maps. This plane had kind of a sunroof, the top of the cockpit was covered with celluloid and this greatly enhanced visibility in this top wing design. Fuselage was covered with aluminium, steel, plywood and canvas. RWD6 was powered by Sidley Armstrong Janet Major 1A radial engine, here is its performance data. This engine was covered with town and ring. Radial engines were generally covered either with town and rings. This is a construction composed of two halves and formed in such way that it um, optimizes airflow around the engine. It's also easy to disassemble. And the other option is the full cowling, the so-called NACA cowling, which was used uh, in Poland, for example, in Jastrząb fighter plane. Engine in RWD6 had electric starter motor and was paired with various propellers, either wooden fixed pitch propellers or metal propeller which had pitch adjustable on the ground. Plane has beautiful trademark engine front cover with RWD letter shaped holes for cooling and inspection. This element was hand forged with the use of sandbags as templates and polished to fish scale pattern to hide imperfect finish. Wheel fairings were made in a similar way. Landing gear had PZL made shock absorbers. They had 40 cm travel, so very long. This made it possible to land this plane to touch down with a high descent speed, which is also a safety feature. Wheels had low-pressure Dunlop tires and independent Bendix brakes. Those brakes could be operated only from the left seat. All the flight controls from the right seat could be disassembled, making it a seat only for passenger. Wings of the plane were made of wood. They were rectangular with rounded edges. They got narrower near the cockpit to enhance visibility. And they had flaps. Flaps didn't have much of an aerodynamical importance in this design. They could be lowered by 15 degrees and ailerons were moving upward by 25 degrees and downward only by 5 degrees. Leading edge has slots which were optimizing airplane performance at high angle of attack and low airspeed. In this design, Lachmann type slots were used. They were always retracted in level flight and opened automatically at critical angles of attack. They were placed on bearings for smooth operation. RWD6 as a performance plane has a given information about its performance, uh, the so-called takeoff over the gate and landing from over the gate. One competition task was something like a high jump. The plane had to clear the 8 meter gate using as short a run as possible and then it had to land from above the gate also stopping at the shortest distance possible. Here is gate takeoff and gate landing performance data of RWD6. The plane had black pitot tube above the wing 
and black Venturi nozzle on the starboard. In Challonge, SCORE was awarded also for operating the plane in hangar. Uh, so wings of RVD6 were folded back in order to push it through the narrow hangar door. It is therefore hard to place fuel tanks within the wings and here sources vary because some sources say that it had 140 liter capacity tanks within the wings but also many sources say that the only fuel tank of the plane was um, inside the fuselage behind uh, the pilot's seats. Uh, it had a capacity of 110 liters. For sure the tank which was inside the fuselage could be doubled, there could be an additional tank attached, which gave the plane its top range of 2000 kilometers. Airwood S6 airplanes were painted silver, they had red elements like uh, decorations, uh, wing struts or window frames. It is um, not easy to determine if stripes which were on the tailplane were black or red because these colors are hard to distinguish on uh, black and white uh, photography. Sources vary. Some say that uh, the, the stripes were red as a Polish national color. Others say it, uh, that um, uh, those were black ones for all the Challenge competition airplanes. Obviously, registration marks and race numbers were painted on the plane, so were the sponsor logos. Polish winning team, Żwirko and Vigura, were sponsored by Stanavo and Castrol lubricant companies. One RWD6 had Mickey Mouse portrayed on the tailplane. RWD6 was first flown on June 3, 1932, but an accident happened. The Alpha Hotel Mike craft flown by Jerzy Drzewiecki crashed after wings broke off. The fuselage landed on wheels. Uh, here the high uh, shock absorber travel was of great help. The pilot was wounded, plane was written off and no reason of the accident was found. Next flight on another RWD6 craft was by Franciszek Żwirko and here also um, there was a malfunction. Uh, RWD6 had a horizontal stabilizer uh, with, which had mechanism changing its angle. This was to compensate for uh, use of fuel. The fuel tank was behind the center of gravity. And as Zwirko was flying, this mechanism failed. Angle of attack of the uh, horizontal stabilizer changed. Uh, the plane began vibrating, but Zwirko managed to recover and land safely. And it was determined that in case of the previous crash, there was the same reason, but the plane um, changed the angle of attack so uh, drastically that automatic slots were deployed and this caused wings to fall off. So um, for the competition, planes were allowed to fly only with slots locked, but I'm not sure if this was obeyed because pictures show planes both with slots uh, open and closed. And there was also um, a limit added to the uh, engine power. Levers, throttle levers had a restricted range of movement so that no um, full engine power was available. Uh, this uh, lock was to be taken off only for the final test of the competition, which was the top speed test. Żwirko and Vigura in RWD6 dominated the Challenge competition for the whole nearly 7400 km route. At the final top speed test, RWD6 achieved speed of average speed of 214 km per hour and was first to cross the finish line, which was a great national technical uh, propaganda success for Poland. Uh, Żwirko and Vigura became national heroes and even um, up until today the date of their win, of their success in challenge competition is the Polish aviation uh, holiday and uh, in virtually every major Polish city there is a street Żwirki i Wigury, Żwirko and Wigura street. Uh, frequently these streets are by some aviation authorities, buildings or by airports. The 300 km top speed test was the only occasion on which RWD6 achieved its top speed. But during this trial 
Zwirko, great aviator, had problem with keeping wings level. As it turned out much later, too late, the problem was that aerodynamic uh, forces um, twisted the wings like this. And this was a phenomenon virtually unknown of at the time. And after this grueling rally, Zwirko and Vigura's plane was not overhauled. And two weeks after the success, it departed to Prague, to Czechoslovakia, for international aviation meeting. On the way, Zwirko and Vigura crossed the Polish-Czechoslovakian border above the town of Cierlicko. There are a few witnesses who saw what happened next, one of whom was on the top of church tower, and he saw the plane of Zwirko and Vigura fly into the turbulent air as the storm was approaching. Aviators managed to turn around, they wanted to escape the storm, but suddenly a wind shear caused the plane to shake and one wing to break off loose. The engine went dead, a few elements of the plane fell down and Rv6 crashed into the forest. Zwirko and Vigura didn't survive this crash and as it was later found, uh, the reason was the insufficient resistance of the wing to this twisting aerodynamical force. When the last remaining Rv6 craft, the one with Mickey Mouse on the tailplane, um, was inspected, um, cracks on wing fittings were discovered. So they, they were not, this was not inspected in, in Zwirko and Vigura's plane and therefore um, it had a fatal result. The crash took place on September 11th, 1932 and despite the tense, difficult uh, political situation between Poland and Czechoslovakia, there was a specially decorated train organized which transported um, bodies of uh, aviators uh, from uh, Cierlicko to Warsaw to Poland. And the train stopped at major stations where um, memorial ceremonies were held and later 300,000 people attended Zwirko and Vigura's funeral. The coffins were placed on uh, airplane fuselages and they were buried in Powąski Cemetery in Warsaw. In Cierlicko, next to the crash site, a chapel was built. Uh, there were two trees uh, which uh, the plane hit. There was a cross with a propeller and this uh, mausoleum, this memorial site, was destroyed uh, at the outbreak of Second World War by the Germans who were unable to beat Poland in aviation competition a few years before. Today a much smaller memorial place is at the scene and there is a so-called Polish home there, Polish house. The last remaining RWD-6 airplane was modified, fittings of the wings were reinforced, second wing strut was added and this simple modification solved the tragic problem. The plane after modifications was designated RWD-6 BIS. It was used by the factory up until 1935 or 36, and then it was disassembled and its fuselage served as a prototype for RWD-13 very successful airplane which still exists. This is the RWD6 history, the plane that showed the world what Polish engineers were capable of and what Polish aviators could do when given a proper airplane, but there was also an unknown fault which caused the death of Polish national aviation heroes. I leave you with RWD6 technical data and see you in next episodes of Vintage Sky. I'm Marek, thanks for watching.